Hello and welcome back to another video and in today's video I'll be going over the shader notes and this will be a complete beginner tutorial so you can follow along I'll explain everything in my last video I got some comments about people still not being able to follow along so I'll try my best to make everything as clear as possible so right now in our scene we have the default setup and I'm just going to delete this by pressing A and then X and clicking delete and then I just want to add in a icosphere a couple subdivisions here and we can shade smooth by pressing right mouse button and clicking shade smooth. What I want to do now is go over to the render properties, change the render engine to cycles, and then our device to GPU, if you have one. If you don't have a GPU, it's completely fine to leave it on CPU. What we can do now is go over to the rendered view, so we can see our icosphere being rendered. And I want to add in a environment texture, which I can do right here. But something else you can do, is disable the scene world and you get the built-in HDRIs. So this is really nice if you don't have any environment textures saved on your device, you can just use these here. So now we can go over here and change this to a shader editor and move this up a little bit. And while having my icosphere selected, I can make a new material and just call this what I want my material to be called. So since my last video, I used a dirty water material that I didn't make public. I'm just going to make a tutorial of how to make dots and along the way we can learn about all the nodes in the node editor. So the first thing we need to do is make this look like water. So we can do that by changing the transmission value to one and then you can see through it. If you change the roughness down, it becomes clearer and rougher respectively of course so in the real world water isn't completely uh, glossy so we do want a little bit of roughness something like 0 0.05 or something maybe even 0 0.1 something like that next we always see uh, waves in the water so if you press shift a we can add in a bump node and we can place that here and connect the normal to the normal and then we can change the height to get our bump. I want to plug this into a Musgrave texture. So we can add that here. And as you can see, it already becomes watery. For bonus points, you can go over to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and type in Node Wrangler, and just enable this one. And then in the Node Editor, you can press Ctrl T, and it will add these mapping nodes and texture coordinate nodes. So we can move that here and then change the texture coordinate from generated to object. And then we can change the scaling like we want it to. To get some more detail in the Musgrave texture, what you can do is just set the detail to 15. And as you can see, it has a lot more detail. And if you want even more detail, you can change the dimension down. And this will create a really textured look. And I really like that for my water. Usually I just set the dimension to one and then the detail to 15. But for calm water, probably two is fine as well, since water doesn't usually look that rough, only in like high seas. We can also see it on a plane, and this looks pretty great. So yeah, I'm keeping it at two, because that looks more realistic for what I'm going for. You can also change the strength here to get less bump and keep it a little bit more subtle. As you can see here, the strength is zero, so it's uh, just like the bump texture isn't really here. And if we set this to one, it's completely bumpy. So I recommend something like 0.5, not too much. Something else really cool you can do with these textures is you can click here on the 3D and set this to 14. So you get four dimensional noise and you get this W factor. If we change this really slowly by pressing shift and sliding, you can see that it is kind of like a seed value for the texture. And it looks like the water is animating, which is something you can use to animate your water. So that's really cool. And I recommend with every texture, you just set it to 40, since if you animate it, this will be so much easier. So as far as the water is concerned, this is pretty much everything we need. There's not really much more we have to do for the water. This is pretty cool. You can use this water texture in a render and it will get the job done. You can also change the color a little bit to make it more blue. But for me, I always like my water to be completely white since I think that's more realistic. Something else really crucial for realistic water is the IOR, which is the index of refraction. Every material has a different index of refraction and this will affect how light passes through it. 
so it's really important to get that right. 1.45 is default in Blender, which is the default IOR for, for a glass pane or something. Uh, so it's really handy to have that default for Windows. But water is actually one and then one third. So we can just do one plus and then one slash three. And if I just cycle back to the other ones, you can see there is a difference in how the light interacts with it. So this one is really important. So keep that in mind. There are a lot of different articles on the types of materials that use different IORs. So you can just look it up there. The most important ones are the IOR of water, uh, 1 plus 1 divided by 3, and the glass 1.45. And I really like Blender for this because it makes me learn some stupid stuff like the index of refractions of water and glass. Some really novel stuff that you otherwise wouldn't learn anyway. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But this is my water texture. And we can just move it to the side because you want to add some realistic um, like algae on top of there. So to do that, we can duplicate this principal BSDF node by pressing Shift D and then moving it to the side. And because we want to make this a algae, we need to change the transmission back to zero. And the IOR doesn't really matter anymore, but I'm just going to set it to default as well. Set the roughness to one and then the color to something that we can clearly see just going to place that here and what we can do now is because we have the node wrangler add-on enabled we can press Control shift and the right mouse button from this principal bsdf to the other one and it will mix them to the, together but what we're going to be doing is changing the factor of this with a musgrave texture the same one and as you can see right here we get these patches it's really cool for more control we can also duplicate this texture and then use that one for more control so we can get the dimension to one for example on this texture keep it as two in the water material we can also change the seat so it's not the same as the bump so it looks a little bit different and not the same All right now i want to get rid of these uh, soft edges so there's a couple ways we can do that but i like to use a color ramp so by shift a again we can add in a color ramp and then place these in between the musgrave and the mix shader I'm going to move these up a little bit so you can see it better. To preview the color ramp, we can press Ctrl Shift and click and we can preview it. And what I want to do now is just move this slider closer to the blacks. So it looks kind of like a black and white instead of having some gray in between. I do want to keep a little bit of gray so it's not like a hard cutoff, which we can do by changing this to constant. And it's just... As you can see, it's really rough and it's not really that realistic. So I like my linear and then just making it something like this. We can now use this as the uh, mix factor. So if we preview the mix shader again, we can see our dirty water appear here. And for my dirty water, I have found a really cool color. So I'm going to be using that one, just pasting it in there. Uh, for the people that care, these are the settings. This is the hex code, this is the RGB code. So you can just copy this color if you want to have it uh, exactly the same as me. So this is um, pretty much what I did for my LG, but I also did some uh, different things to make it even more realistic. So we can come down to our LG material right here and we can shift A to add in a Voronoi texture. Preview this. We can see it's kind of like these mosaic tiles, if that makes sense. As you can see here, mosaic tiles. And we can change to 40 again, so we can uh, see more mosaic. And I will be using this for the individual bits of algae. So if you scale this up a lot, to something like uh, 150, we can see a lot of these tiny little uh, bits. And I'm going to be using this color data to make a mask for the hue and saturation and value of this color right here. So to do that, I will be adding in a map range node, which is pretty much just a, a color ramp, but with a little bit more control. So now everything becomes black and white since this um, deals with numbers instead of colors. And we can use these values for the U and saturation node. So if I shift A and add that one in right here, uh, we can set this to the U. And then if we set this color to something like a red, 
as you can see, not everything will be red. Uh, this looks more like 0.25, if that makes sense. If you were to say that uh, 1 is completely white and 0 is completely black, this would probably be about 0.25 and this 0 0.7, 0 0.8 something. So we can use those values in the U slider. So we get different values everywhere. So what I want to do now, just copy this base color by pressing Ctrl C uh, while having my cursor above this. And we can paste it in here. And then we can adjust this so it looks pretty much the same. And we can adjust the uh, saturation and the value and then change the factor to get this effect right here. If you want, you can change the to max to make it uh, a little bit more contrasted so things will be uh, wider and you can change the two min to make all the blacks a little bit uh, wider as well but i think two max uh, two is great for this and it looks really cool so now we can plug the color into the base color and then preview the mix shader again and as you can see here our Fortnite pattern appears here but it gets cut off uh, where we get the musgrave texture to end I think I don't actually want to change the saturation on the value. So this is pretty much it. And this is actually basically everything. It's not exactly the same as my material, but it gets pretty close. The essentials are the same. We're not really done yet. I just want to make a really quick adjustment. And that is to select everything here, except for these nodes, and then press Ctrl G to make it into a group, which is something I wanted to show you as well. So a the fun thing about this group is that if we press tab we can go back and as you can see everything is condensed into one node. We can call this dirty water, set the shield so we protect it from being deleted later and we just move it up here. And if we select this node again and press tab we can go into the node and right here we can drag for example the seed value into the socket here and this will add a value we can change here. This is the animate and let's say i want to change the name of this w to animate we can go over to this group here and then double click and call this animate so this is how the uh, custom nodes are made so for example we can uh, set the strength here i always like to call this normal and then people can change the normal really easily without having to look at this web of connections and nodes and you can plug basically every single input in here and then have it change depending on what the user wants. So for my dirty water material, which I have right here, as you can see, I chose for the seed, the scale, the U, the saturation, the amount, uh, which the amount is pretty cool. Uh, we can go back to our scene. We can change the amount of algae as well. So to change the amount, what we want to do is add in a math node. We can add in a math node and then change the value. And we can use this for the amounts. I love making a custom node group. So um, my materials look like this. And I can change everything I want really easily. And I don't have to look at the mess of the connections and the nodes and everything. So I highly recommend you do this. So we can uh, just plug it in here and set this to LJ amounts. And then we can access it from right here. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you in the next one. So goodbye.